to dreams. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bro Dude Man Chief podcast. This is the first episode. I'm going to try to do a video and audio podcast as well. So hopefully things go good. This podcast is going to mainly be about just the different challenges and things you kind of go through as a content creator or just somebody trying to navigate life and, and keep that creative energy really just alive in your life, no matter what you do. Not everybody including myself especially, um, ends up making art and creativity part of their professional life. So that being said, um, just to introduce myself, since this is the first podcast, my name is Giuseppe Quozo. I also call myself um, Bro Dude Man Chief, kind of as my online name. Uh, I've been playing music for like 12 years, uh, doing photography off and on for I'd say like six is like also a hobby, gaming, you know, off and on all my life. So Really, those are the kind of the three main things creatively that um, I kind of pursue. Me personally, I've been in different career fields like healthcare. I've been in commercial driving, which I'm in right now. I've been in the food service. Uh, thinking about getting into the tech field, getting into IT and cybersecurity. And I'm just I'm 30 years old, so I'm really at a point in my life where I'm really trying to figure out where to go. Oh, geez, there's like a tiny weird little like bug in my room that is that was terrifying <laughs> but anyways yeah so that's who I am I've really liked content creating I've really liked watching youtubers and people that make content and put things out and I really would like to get things to a point where you know the hobby kind of pays for itself I, I mean obviously everybody would like to be you know a famous content creator not everybody but some people would like to do it for a living. Not everybody gets that luxury. So that leading into like my first topic of the day is, you know, getting a work home life balance, you know, so that time to make the money you need to when you're kind of on the grind and you're kind of, you're on the come up for things. Um, and just finding something that works in the meantime, before you really figure out what the hell you want to do uh, with your creative life, with your content creating life, as well as like just your, your personal time and then obviously you know just mixing it all together so to to dive right into that for me i found that one thing that's particularly a challenge is right now i'm a garbage guy so i work a physical job uh before that i was in i was a ltl truck driver uh with a limited trailer load truck driver so i did you know pretty decently long shifts. I'm doing pretty decently long shifts. Now I work from, I'm going to get up like three 30 in the morning. I work till like five in the afternoon. So my schedule is pretty hectic. Um, you know, currently living with the in-laws to save up for a house, uh, just trying to kind of set myself up, me and my girl up for the future and, you know, kind of move on to my adult adult life. I'm moving from young adult to adult adult. And I'm I'm right at that cusp. I just turned 30 this past July of 2023. And I'm really thinking about what am I really going to do for the rest of my days? You know, just existential dread type stuff that a lot of people think about. And for me right now, luckily I have somebody who was a big part of my life, my girlfriend, who was wonderful and smart. Um, and really us working together makes things a hell of a lot easier and less frightening. So I have, I do consider myself incredibly lucky to have that in my life and that pertains to this by saying like she can kind of help me take care of like the day-to-day -day tasks of life you know cleaning making dinner walking the dogs you know things like that we kind of choreograph that with each other and that kind of works for like when I'm done at work and I'm exhausted and I have very little time because I gotta get to bed early um to make it to work the next day you know and then I still have to find time for content creation it it definitely it's hard and I've had to change things up a lot. Hell, even little things like what am I going to do for food? Being in a trash truck instead of a tractor trailer. Now I I'm in a cab over. So cab over your engines 
like basically sitting with you versus tractor trailer. It's like a, a car where it's in front of you or in the trunk. And that, that pertains to it. Like now I, I can't have a big giant bag with me all the time, you know, cause I can't reach and grab shit. So now I have a smaller lunch, you know, it's like little, little details about life to, to make things more efficient. That way when I get home and I got to take care of a few tasks, the day to day stuff. And then it comes time finally for hopefully me to get a, a solid, maybe couple hours or so to create content and do the things I want to do it. It's definitely a chore. Also, I apologize. You can hear my dogs barking in the background. I have, I live with five dogs. It's pretty hectic. So yeah, I, I really, I think that the thing that drives me is never kind of giving up on trying new things and just constantly grinding till something fits. Um, and I've had times in my life where things kind of fell into place and then things changed because life these days is very sporadic and kind of all over the place for a lot of people. Everybody's kind of trying to figure out what the hell to do with things costing a ridiculous amount and everybody's having to kind of step up their game. Oh, that was my little baby Husky. It just howled a little bit. His name is Hawkeye. He is cute. Yeah, he's an incredible distraction. But anyways, I have ADHD up the max, so if I get sidetracked, I do apologize. But anyways, yeah, so really the first topic that I want to tackle in this is finding that work-home life balance. And throughout these podcasts, you'll join me on this journey, and I'll bring in other people, other streamer friends, and other creative people um, to talk about this subject, talk about that work-home life balance. And that's something that will be probably a reoccurring topic, especially with guests um, to see how they handle stuff and how they do things. And it's kind of interesting to me how people do that. And I feel like other people could get something out of that to figure out maybe a new way of going about things to kind of choreograph their life in a way where they can fit the hobbies and the things that they really enjoy for themselves, along with fitting time for their family and then also making time for, you know, obviously you have to make time for work and you got to make a living. So yeah. And that brings me on to my next topic here, which will also be another thing I'll probably bring up in the future, uh, which is career changes. So I'm considering leaving commercial driving um, for getting into tech. Specifically, I've found interest in cybersecurity. Uh, one of the reasons why is because I feel like it's a growing career. You're constantly learning stuff um, and uh, advancing with different certifications and technologies and stuff. I would prefer to have a specialization in cloud security. My ultimate goal is to get myself to a point where I can help companies who want to be more cloud-based or even smaller businesses that want to be more cloud-based and not have to rely on local um, memory um, and stuff like that to hold all their stuff, um, to be able to navigate that stuff and navigate it securely. So that's that's something that I've I kind of want to look into. The, the career path for that for me of course, my dog's chewing a bottle as I'm trying to talk, but whatever. Anyways, the career path for me, I found like some free courses online, helped me get that basic understanding, those fundamentals down without having to go too deep into it, especially since I'm still working right now and I can work at my own pace. So I'm going to do that. And then if that goes well and I feel like I'm getting in, I'm liking what I'm doing, um, you know, or, or if I don't like it, I can walk away from it, you know, nothing lost. Uh, but if I do like it and want to continue, I'll probably do a boot camp, um, which is much, much more cost efficient option and then get into like a lower level IT help desk position and then get my two years, two, three years of experience um, doing different things and kind of see how I feel from there. If I still want to do cloud based or if I find something else, maybe email security or, um, you know, remote um, access security, different things, or maybe not security at all. Maybe I'll like a uh, web designer, who knows what I might fall into. I've noticed watching other people on YouTube and different forums, they kind of go through a series where like they start off kind of having one expectation of where they want to go. And then all of a sudden opportunities arise. And next thing you know, they're like a director of some sort or something, um, which was what the most recent guy I watched on YouTube uh, went through, we ended up progressing pretty quickly, um, into almost a, you know, a management level position, um, just cause you know, he ended up doing very well and was in the right place at the right time. And I'm okay with those kind of crazy changes. So I I'm struggling with, do I keep this 
commercial job and try to do something with it? Do I stay in what I'm in now, which is garbage hauling? Uh, reason why I went into garbage hauling, garbage, you know, with COVID and stuff, killing a lot of jobs, whatever. Garbage didn't slow down. People's garbage will, there will always be trash. It will always need to be taken out. It will always need to be dealt with. Um, so waste management is always just, it's not the company I work for, but just that's just the term I'm using. Um, waste management is just always going to be present. It's always going to be there. It's never going to slow down. You can rely on it. Um, as well, the the job that the place that I work offers good health benefits, decent pay, you know, nothing crazy, but you know, it's steady. It can pay the bills. Um, you know, there's that, there's other things. Who knows? I might not go into tech at all. I might find a better fit for me driving wise, maybe. And the only reason why I say that trash hauling is not a good fit for me is because I don't know. It just, it seems, it seems draining a little bit. It's very, very monetary at times. Uh, I really enjoy being on computers and I've always enjoyed technology and things like that. And being in the know about like, you know, new technology and how all that stuff works given I could be interested in it all day. It's like my, my dive into the food industry. I love cooking. I'm Italian. My grandfather cooked, I will, we have a long line of people who cooked in my family. I really enjoyed that. Got in the food industry, totally hated it. Um, same thing for me in the healthcare industry. I went to school uh, briefly for medical assisting. I wasn't bad at it. I had a job lined up in a cardiologist's office. Um, I could have advanced from there, gotten into a major hospital and worked my way up and possibly joined a nursing program, had them pay for my whole nursing program and became an RN. So I could have gone that route or the, with the certifications I had, I could have became a phlebotomist or an office administrator. So that being said, like I, I ended up getting into that and I just, I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand it. So it's like, it's, it's very confusing. I got into commercial driving. I did enjoy it. My last job I had before this one, I was let go. Um, just had to, a lot of, a ton of issues with management at the time. Um, we just couldn't see eye to eye on some things. And eventually, you know, I got frustrated and basically we called the quits on each other. You know, it was either I was going to leave or they were going to fire me. Um, you know, cause it, I just, me and management were not getting along. So that happens. Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I gained a lot of valuable experience from that job and I, I don't regret getting that job. So you know, who knows, maybe I'll go back to that industry. That was the LTL trucking industry I was in before trash hauling, which I'm currently in, um, limited trailer load for those who don't know what LTL means, meaning like, you know, it's kind of the, it's the type of trucking that's, it bridges the gap between the big cross country guys and your small UPS box truck. So if you order like a big giant 2000 pound pallet of flour or a big ass engine piece for a small, you know, um, repair shop, that that would have been my job, you know, or even like a commercial refrigerator, shit like that. So I don't know. Either way, like that was an interesting job and I really liked the area I worked. But yeah, just I couldn't stand it anymore. The work environment I was in, I just I wasn't happy, uh, you know, and I was I was holding out for them to open another location and transfer. But sadly, things just didn't work out that way. So. It is what it is. Plus with, with that job, people not ordering specialty expedited stuff as much. The hours kind of cut down. My pay was not as good. And I'm so, even though I'm working a, a job that pays me a considerable amount less an hour, I do get more overtime and it's steadier. Um, it has better health benefits. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, just to kind of finish up, uh, the topic of career changes, it's, it's frightening as you know, to change careers. It's, especially starting fresh with something after you've become good at something and you've built a name and you're about, you know, about I'd say three and a half years into commercial driving and I've done well. Thankfully I've never been in an accident knock on my plastic fake wood desk, uh, that, that continues, you know, so it's, it's hard to, it's hard to realistically think of me walking away from that whole career field because I put so much time and energy into it. Um, Another thing too, so moving on from career changes onto, you know, making a schedule for myself for, especially for streaming and for content creation. So getting more specific with that home balance aspect of it, uh, making a stream schedule is, is nothing short of just almost 
feels like impossible for me. It's like an uphill battle because I really want to, with content creation, I know that it, it, once you build an audience, you know, it's like uh, watching television and people being excited for like their next episode. Like they want to know, like, when are you going to be there? When should I be ready to watch your stuff? And I want to be consistent, whether this is successful or not with the podcast or any other creative endeavor that I do, I want to be consistent. I want to, you know, I want to be on a regular basis, like I'm going to do this twice a week or whatever. And making those schedules for things is tough, especially with life changes. And it's, it's really hard. And I, I really grown a massive amount of respect for people that do it professionally for the aspect of just how the hell do they make it happen with all the craziness of life? And they still keep pumping this stuff out. And that's, that's nothing short of impressive, especially new people, coming up and finding that time and getting it done. I mean, that's another great question that I'm going to have ideally for, you know, smaller level people or hopefully bigger level people on this podcast is how do you make it work with your schedule? I mean, how do you get all this stuff in there? I mean, what, what are the obstacles you have to go through? What are the things you have to deal with? Like I said, for me, it's dealing with my job. Um, I have two Huskies who I got, I got to walk them. I got to spend time with them. I have a wonderful girlfriend, you know, we do stuff we have, we do, you know, we do things together, go on dates and what, what have you. And also, you know, I, I'm in a band, I'm in a cover band. I play um, like a, almost an emo night level cover band that I'm in. And, you know, I got to make time for that. It's Thursdays. We do practice and then we're going to be playing shows. We're going to be playing out. I got a show next Saturday on the 16th um, in Syracuse, New York that we're doing uh, opening for another cover band. It's our, our first show and that's going to ideally take off as another creative venture for me. Uh, I still have my, the death metal band that I'm in as well. So this is how it ends. Uh, we're still, we've been sitting on an EP for God knows how long and ran into issue after issue just with life. Um, it's me and two members right now. I'm more of a studio project, but you know, they both got kids and it's tough. And one of those members is with me in the cover band and it's still tough. Um, it's really tough out there for us, like 30 year old, you know, right, late twenties, early thirties people. It's, it's rough trying to kind of carve your, your spot out in this life. So making that schedule and making it consistent where even if crazy shit happens, you can make it work so that we can keep up that momentum, keep up that monetization ideally. And you know, who knows really my goal for, for the podcasting and for anything else is to just have the hobby pay for itself. I'm not looking to gain notoriety or you know walk on the red carpet for my podcast you know i i just it would be cool to make like 100 bucks a month you know like from all these different creative endeavors like all together maybe like 100 200 bucks all together like that would be that would be like that would be for me i made it you know that's i mean taking my roughly you know with my crazy job uh like thousand dollar a week take home paycheck and bumping it up to eleven twelve hundred dollars just from creativity would be outstanding would be awesome and i think it's doable i th i think i just got to kind of keep trying stuff out and seeing what works and what i really enjoy and that's the big thing for me finishing up this topic um with making the stream schedule is finding something where I'm, when i take the time out of my day to make these things happen that it's enjoyable i enjoy taking the time out to do that stuff and i find I feel fulfilled making this stuff because I feel like the biggest topic that I see other people who talk about these things is, is genuineness. I have, I want to genuinely enjoy what I'm doing. I want to genuinely get something out of it. I want to genuinely feel like, okay, like I fed that hobby. Like I fed that, you know, for hunger for lack of a better term. And I, I really just, I want something I can sink my teeth into that. I just feel like, okay, that was sick. Like that was awesome. So, Moving on to my last topic of the day um, is taking care of myself and where that falls into this whole thing. Um, one of the things is now I work a, a job where it's not physical. I sit in a, a seat all day. I work in one of the trash trucks that has like this mechanical arm that comes out and grabs the can and throws it out. So I don't really get out of the truck and throw trash um, in the traditional sense. That's a thing since COVID that's become prevalent in my area. Um, pretty much everybody uses the arm trucks. So you know, doing that, like with all these things I have going on in my life, making that time to go to the gym for like 30 minutes or eating a little bit better. And when you're fast paced and you're trying to get shit done, you know, you're always wanting to eat like crazy 
shitty stuff. So like I right now I'm I'm gonna try like meal prepping like protein bowls, things that I could eat quickly that are gonna pack a punch, like, you know, rice, beans, Mexican chicken, boom, you know, some chipotle ranch, some chips, done. You know, things like that. And also making time out, things that I've done in the past that felt incredibly fulfilling would be, you know, waking up and doing yoga and doing some stretching. Uh, maybe taking, I used to watch a 10 minute video every morning uh, for meditation, like guided meditation, things like that. And, you, you know, people really don't take that time. I haven't taken that time today. I know that when I, for me, ideally to carve out the time to do it, which this is asking a lot of myself, do like a quick, you know, 10 minute workout, stretch for 10 minutes, meditate for 10 minutes. So about 30 minutes each morning. Oh, here comes my puppy. Oh no. He's crying. He's like, what are you, who are you talking to? Where's my mom? She's at work. But anyways, yeah. So I would really enjoy, um, just, you know, finding more time to take care of myself and take care of the things I want. My puppy wants me to take care of myself and take him for a walk, which I'm going to do after I shoot this podcast. But ideally, I'm probably trying to go for roughly about 30 minutes. Um, so just to walking away from that topic of taking care of myself and the whole mess of things, um, you know, just talking about the general direction of this podcast and stuff like that, I really would like to make probably a weekly one, about 30 minutes. Uh, and post it. Uh, I'm going to try to make like a video podcast and audio. Like I said much earlier in, in this, um, in this cast, I really want to hear people's feedback too and become better at content creation and be humble and understand, you know, obviously that I'm just starting out and I'm going to be making mistakes and make weird faces. I'm going to say weird things and say, um, and, uh, you know, a hundred times I say, you know, a hundred times as well. That's like a, a pet peeve. So I really enjoy making this content because I like getting better. I like seeing improvement in myself. And that's also a very fulfilling thing that I look forward to is getting better. I've seen myself already with live streaming and learning the technology and different things. I like f seeing the progress. I, I try to stop and smell the roses of like, hey, like look at where you were a few months ago, look at where you're at now. Those, those small victories and things like that really help keep me motivated to keep going. And also, you know, whether it's toxic um, criticism or constructive criticism, I take it all in with a grain of salt and really like to see, I, I, I really, my hope for getting more followers and people that listen to my stuff really is to just get that feedback. I love feedback. I love getting third party perspectives and and hearing that stuff, whether it's on my music or anything I do, um, sometimes people are just jerks and they just say, wow, you, you freaking suck. Like, don't just say that I suck. Tell me why. I want to know why. What what did you not like? What what do you think I could have done in your opinion? And I those things are invaluable to me. So, you know, I I don't know. I really just, I hope that, you know, I gain a following for that reason alone. That would be payment enough for me making these podcasts and talking about different things. And in general, too, finding different things people might want me to talk about. Like I thought about doing um, a series where I talk about different lore from different games. So, like, example, my, my favorite games, um, Dragon Age, uh, Fable Trilogy, Skyrim. I... I haven't played it enough. I have played it often. It's such a vast game, especially with the mods. It just blows my mind. So I would really like to hear what, what people would like to see, who they would like on the channel and different topics to cover. I, you know, whether it be music, photography, creativeness in general, um, that would be so ideal to, to experience and to, and to grow with an audience um, experiencing it all together and, and then watching me through my various formats of content creation where I go. But either way, moving on to yet another topic here. I'm going to freelance it because I got a list in front of me of talking points. So I've ran out and it looks like I'm at about 25 minutes. So now like 
example of me getting better, I know that, okay, I've got to see one, two, three, four, five talking points. I hit about maybe 23 minutes and I want to do a half an hour. So I'm going to probably need to get about eight different quick talking points or get a guest on for, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes or the whole podcast, who knows? So that's another thing. Um, other creative endeavors in the future I'm going to do, you know, would probably be, uh, I'd like to do nostalgia music reviews on YouTube. Um, taking two songs. So taking two songs from like 10 years ago plus and reviewing those as well as a couple more local or more recent should say not local, more recent songs that have came out and reviewing those and maybe just kind of, scheduling them to kind of post throughout the week or a couple of weeks or whatever, just kind of building up a building up a catalog of stuff that I can just click to post randomly. Uh, I like, you know, and there's other things I, I thought about kind of intermingling interesting history facts. I, I try really hard. That's another big thing I have to tackle is, you know, you, I'm a human being and just like any other human being, I have an array of interests that span a wide range. But when it comes to this content creation, I can't be telling ghost stories and then talking about food and then talking about random stuff all the time. Like I don't, I don't want to do that. And that's why I made this podcast about what I did to kind of generalize stuff as far as like, you know, making it about content creators and the struggles and the different things that we go through and the, how different aspects of our lives affect different things, um, to do specifically with content creation. So that being said, I, I really look forward to, to having different types of kids. Jeez. I have like a weird little, I have an annoying little fly in here somewhere. Also my dog is being, I wonder what my other one. Oh, my other husky sleeping right next to the door. He's super adorable. But yeah, no. In general, I would also like to say too that uh to the taking care of myself aspect, which was my last topic, I would say probably another thing I would really enjoy doing is maybe hearing about different people's accomplishments and struggles, things that they tried maybe in the past that failed. So like maybe they tried like a little trophy or a little niche thing in their stream or whatever. And they're like, yeah, I, tr I did this, I did that or whatever. I tried to make this like catchphrase and it was just flopped. I, I, I like to hear about people's like struggles and come ups with flops and different things. But anyways, yeah, I thank you all for coming in and listening to this podcast again. My name is Giuseppe Cuozzo, a.k.a. Bro Dude Man Chief. And again, this is my first podcast I've ever done, so a lot to learn from. I can already tell different things I'm going to do next time, um, have more talking points. That way I can kind of keep the conversation flowing a little bit better, maybe even sub-bullet points as well. That way I can cover things. But I'm going to post this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to anybody that takes the time out to listen and give me their criticism and see what people have to say as far as what they want to hear and what they want me to do. I'd love to interview bands on here as well. So just music, gaming, and photography, um, interview photographers, graphic designers, uh, people that live creative lives. I like, to, that's what I want to do. I want to bring other local creative people or, you know, international people if I can manage it into the conversation and just see what they do see how they navigate this this modern day creative world that we live in um how you know even COVID affected you know creative people and how that did stuff so yeah a lot of exciting things i'm going to try a lot of different stuff and again really really looking forward to all of that stuff but either way guys thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.